So have you ever stared at a PLC nestled within a rat's nest of wires inside a control panel and thought, what the hell is going on here? Well, back in the day as a young service engineer, this was a regular occurrence for me. Staring into that labyrinth of wires, feeling like I've been thrown into a wiring maze with no clue where to start. And I remember thinking, wiring a PLC has got to be the Apollo mission of electrical tasks. Well, let me tell you something, after spending years now designing building and commissioning control and automation systems, I can confidently say it's not the brain scratcher that I once thought it was. And if you stick with me through this video, I'm gonna show you the steps to wiring a PLC. So hopefully by the end of the video, you won't be a deer in the headlights like I once was. Okay guys, so before I quickly run through the project that we're referring to here, I just wanna say that there's only really three things to consider when you're talking about the wiring of a PLC. So the first thing is comms, communication. Second thing, are inputs and the third thing are outputs and then with the inputs and the outputs they're either digital or they're analog so if there's one thing that you take away from this video today just know in terms of the wiring there's only really three things communication inputs and outputs that's all that really makes up a plc now the plc that we're looking at within this project is a Zenio plc which uses the knx protocol and this is a bms project so building management system used primarily to control heating, ventilation and air conditioning. So as you can see here we've got our Zenio modules and like most PLCs they are modular so we've got like the main controller here and then we've got various different modules that we tag onto the main controller based on what our IO requirements are so our input output requirements are. So guys let's start with the comms so we've got the KNX twisted pair protocol which is communicated communicating from the main KNX controller or power supply and then feeding all the other modules or devices within the system. And we've also got our ethernet connection, which is for our IP protocol, which allows the system to communicate out on the internet and then for people to communicate in or monitor in via the internet if you're monitoring things remotely. So I think the best way for me to show you the wiring process of the comms is to just go through the photos that I took as I was building this control system. Obviously this is the finished article so you can't really see the stages that I took so let's dive in and have a look at the photos. So yeah first of all I just do the twisted pair comms and I start on the main controller which is over here and then just bus it across on all the modules that are there. So this little detail here you can see I'm actually just using a screwdriver to bend a nice radius on that solid core cable rather than just bending it at like a 90 degree angle. So it, look, it just looks nicer and also keeps the integrity of that solid copper cable. So this is what it looks like completed with all of those little links cut to the right length for the KNX bus. And also you'll notice that I've just added in an ethernet patch lead. My advice guys would be don't bother making up your own data cables, ethernet cables, RJ45 cables, whatever you want to call them. Just buy patch leads. They're cheap as chips. They're already pre-tested. They have loads of different lengths, so it's just far easier, quicker just to buy patch leads. There you go, just another angle, the twisted pair and the ethernet cable. And again, another angle. So then like what we did with the ethernet cable, you've obviously got the IP connection to the main controller here, but then going out of the panel or at least meeting another incoming data cable coming into the panel. And we're doing the same thing now with the KNX cable. So you'll see this green cable now is actually taking that KNX bus up to the top terminals to then allow any KNX devices out in the field to also be on that KNX communication bus. So yeah, you can see here's the cable and we're keeping it in its full insulation here because it's going to be running next to other cables which could potentially induce noise so we just want to be careful there and then up to these Wago terminal blocks for then a inbound KNX cable that's then going to go off to other devices in the field and there's another angle just of the comms wired so ethernet in white going out from the main controller to the terminal blocks then meeting the incoming cable and same thing with the KNX cable we're bussing from the furthest module all the way to the main controller module and then out around and off to the terminal blocks. 
to then again have a KNX cable coming into the panel that then feeds other devices in the field. And then in terms of the tools that I use, guys, um, heat shrink and heat gun, Nipex strippers, standard, I use those for everything in control panels, Nipex ergo strippers, which are perfect for that green KNX cable, and then just your standard side cutters, screwdriver, that kind of thing. Now onto the inputs and outputs. And remember what I said, these are either digital or analog. So digital, they're either on or off, they're true or false, that kind of thing. And then analog signals, they're a range. So let's say a temperature between minus 20 degrees and plus 80 degrees. And then you've got a, a range within that. So in terms of the wiring, in this project, I'm using a zero to 10 volt analog output signal feeding a boiler that's then translating that signal into heat output of the boiler. So we've got a zero to 10 volt range and we might say that 10 volts is the boiler at 90 degree heat, putting out water at 90 degree heat, and maybe one volt is set to 30 degree heat, and then five volts is sort of somewhere in the middle. So if we look at this image here, so the wiring really for inputs and outputs is very straightforward. As you can see, it's just single core cable, and this module here, actuator one, you can see we've got zero to 10 volt outputs, these are outputs. So one, terminal one, and terminal two. We've got two boilers in this project. So what they're ultimately doing is sending out that zero to 10 volts, depending on how we've got the system programmed. And then ultimately what's happening is, is that's going off to terminal blocks within the control panel, and then field wiring is then connecting to those terminal blocks, then carrying that signal zero to 10 volts to the boilers. It's a little bit more complicated than that within this system, but generally that's what would be happening. And then let's have a look at the digital input signals now. And these are these white cables feeding into ACT5. And you can see that we've got four inputs, sorry, eight inputs, four on the top and four on the bottom. And just a little bit more detail on these digital inputs. I like to refer to these little circuits on this PLC as closed loop circuits. And you can see here that we've got 3.3 volts going out on the C terminals, the common terminals. So 3.3 volts is going out, and then ultimately it's coming back to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight input terminals. And that completes the circuit. But in the middle, we've got a relay. And in this project, for example, we're, we're using a relay. When a fault from the boiler, for example, occurs, out in the field, that signal from the boiler then energizes a relay in our panel. And then one of the poles of that relay are these circuits here. So when that closes, that allows that common to go through the relay and then back to let's say terminal five. And then our PLC then can see that there's a fault on the boiler out in the field and then we can do whatever we want to do off the back of that whether it's sending a text message an email whether it's switching over to the other boiler we can program this all within the plc and guys if you're not already a member of our private facebook community where we help individuals develop the skills knowledge and understanding to advance their businesses or careers into the automation and control industries then i recommend that you click the link in the description below and and if you're interested to see how a control panel is built from scratch, then I think you'll like to watch this video right here.